Tell me about this index of multiple deprivation. The government established in the 1990s a way of measuring deprivation on a, a, a ward uh, basis and at a level below wards, so they broke wards up into much smaller neighbourhood areas. And the way that they chose to do that was to combine uh, a number of separate measurements of deprivation. Um, the key among them would be uh, unemployment stats, health statistics for an area, um, issues about economic activity, community safety, levels of crime, quality of housing, and they combined those together uh, and given each of them a different weighting. So I think the one that gets the biggest weighting is the unemployment indices and then the others um, perhaps get different weightings. And that's then combined to produce a standardised score for the ward, which you can then look at, say, how Cadley differs from Fishwick and how those differ from wards anywhere else in the country. And it's that measurement that the government uses to determine how it's going to allocate monies like Working Neighbourhood Fund or other specialist funds. Um, so uh, having a high level of, um, as measured by the Index of Multiple Deprivation, is good for an area in that, currently, it entitles you to access to some specialist government funds. But obviously that's a kind of paradoxical situation because it's based on the fact that people in that area don't have a lot of opportunities, maybe don't have very good quality lives. Um, so that's what it is. How do you measure the economic activity? Um, economic activity um, is measured by um, those people who are in an area who are available for work who are engaged in uh, either paid or unpaid work. So it, uh, it, it, the Preston overall has actually got quite a high level of economic activity. Um, but obviously in the most deprived wards, um, then that's not the case.